What's up, everybody? Hope you guys are having a great day. So what is this crazy thing that I'm holding right here? Well, this is called the EWI 5000. If you don't know what an EWI is, it stands for Electronic Wind Instrument. And this is an instrument that I used on my last album that I came out with, uh, Memories Adrift by David V. Stewart's Zool. Here's what the uh, Here's what the album looks like. So there is Ewe all over that album. This is an instrument um, that I didn't pick up that long ago, um, but I was a clarinetist and a saxophonist uh, years ago when I started band. Now at this point, like 30 years ago, hard to think of it that it's been that long. Um, but I really wanted to get this to bring into my repertoire for what I was working on musically at the time that I was making that album because I was doing a lot of uh, synthesizer stuff but the problem with doing synthesizer stuff is that your expression is somewhat limited. When you're playing on a keyboard, you have a velocity information that uh, equates to how hard you push down the key, but what you're missing is the ability to crescendo and decrescendo within a single note without having to bring in lots of extra equipment and do things that are rather unnatural. However, if you play one of these things, you'll find if you're familiar with oboe or clarinet or saxophone or flute, um, it's quite easy to perform these sorts of expressive things because it acts like a wind instrument. And so the way that this works is there's actually a pressure sensor inside this mouthpiece. It's actually quite difficult to blow into. It really does feel like playing an oboe. And if you've never played an oboe, it's like you're just you're struggling to get the air out. Uh, I know some people actually drill holes in this to get it out, but it senses the pressure of your air and then can translate that into a value either um, if you have a MIDI MIDI patch bank or if you're using the built-in sounds as I was for this demonstration. So um, you can start very quietly. And grow and decay, so you can do a crescendo and a decrescendo. Um, you can also vary the pitch by varying the strength of your embouchure on this. Now, um, I will say for those of you who are used to playing, say, saxophone or oboe, um, you can do it with your lips, but it's much easier to do with your teeth because this thing's quite stiff. So, so that's just a really natural feel to me to be able to to create a crescendo. to do something like that. It's very, very natural uh, compared to trying to get it to work out on a synthesizer uh, keyboard somehow. So I really, really like this instrument. I wanted to show it to you guys and let you uh, see all the features for those of you who are wind players or just maybe looking to find something that broadens your uh, expressive horizons. I would say that if you're not used to playing um, a woodwind instrument that getting used to the fingering Maybe maybe an adjustment period, but it's actually quite logical compared to say trumpet, uh, where you have a series of valves and you just memorize a bunch of different patterns to figure out how to go up and down. But this one, it's pretty easy. You know, um, as you add fingers, it gets lower. As you take away fingers, it gets higher. Um, and uh, saxophone fingerings work really well for this. Uh, it's just a it's just a good instrument all around here. So the basics of this, I explained how the how the MIDI pressure system works, how the fingering system works. So you can actually put in several different fingering systems. For the thumb, rather than having, say, a thumb hole or a series of thumb keys like you would have on the oboe or the bassoon or the clarinet, um, what you get are these rollers. And the way that these rollers work is um, they're capacitive and wherever your thumb is between them, it determines what octave. So as you go up, it raises the octave and as you go down, it lowers the octave. Additionally, there's a whole bunch of different little touch pads all over um, this thing that do different things. Uh, so the first one is there's a strip over here that's just to the right of these rollers. And if your thumb is on that anywhere along the strip, what it will do is it will glide in between the notes uh, completely fluidly like you're playing on a fretless instrument. Um, which has a really great effect and it's an effect that's very, very difficult to execute without an instrument like this. So it's an effect that I tend to use quite a bit. You also have a touch plate um, right here. This is where you're supposed to rest your thumb and this is part of the grounding system that makes this thing work, as is this screw. So you actually use this screw right here um, to change the patches and I'll show that in a second. Uh, but 
Over here, there's also two little touch pads, and these will raise or lower the pitch as you roll your thumb up onto them. So you roll your thumb, let's see if I can show it this way. You roll your thumb up and it raises the pitch, you roll it down and it lowers the pitch. Um, just bends it down like you would lip down on a saxophone or maybe half hole on a clarinet. And uh, those settings can be adjusted depending on how much you know bend you want. get some cool effects and you could even do combine that with glide and get some really really strange uh, little beeps and boops uh, and get a lots of different little glides that happen in between that um, what else do you have on this so there's a couple of switches right here and these are used for a couple of things so if you turn the top one on you'll you'll see what this does right away uh, it holds the first note so if you want to create a pedal point you can create some very very cool effects with that you can also turn this on the bottom one and it will create octaves um, and create some very cool effects with that. So you can even have, uh, I think, can you have both of them? It's either one. You can't have both of them on. Um, I haven't used those all that much, but it's kind of an interesting effect if you want to use this live for some of your music. Um, I tend to use this mostly as a an expressive device for recording. Um, and you can hear some of the built-in sounds. Now you also use these switches on the side to change through the patches and you'll touch a screw and on the back will light up a number and you can go through this touch the screw and you can go through and and uh, pick a couple of different uh, patches out like this let's see if i can there we go match four five six seven i think i have a patch list here there's so many i can't remember all of them let's try pan pipes which is uh which is number 11 here so you touch that and you go up to number 11 and then you get even been with that too. Create some very, very strange effects. Um, lots of different cool effects there. There's a whole bunch of sounds. This one, unlike some of the previous versions of the Iwi, the electronic wind instrument, you have, um, instead of, say, What's, what would I call FM synthesized sounds, uh, which is you have a synthesizer built in that's creating uh, creating the sounds there. You have samples. And the samples can be good or bad, depending on how you look at it. Some of the samples are really good. Uh, there's a bunch of saxophone samples. They're all really decent for saxophone samples. The problem is it's really hard to get a saxophone sample that sounds accurate to the instrument. The instrument, there's so much complexity to its um, acoustic profile, it's difficult to duplicate. Whereas clarinet, clarinet samples tend to sound pretty good as do oboe samples. Saxophone though just never seems to sound right unless you have the real instrument. And that's kind of the case with this. The sample's probably close enough in a rich texture, you're not gonna pick out that the saxophone doesn't quite sound right. But if you're listening to it by itself, it's, it's not quite there. The other thing is if you're gonna go with an electronic instrument, it's kind of like, shouldn't you just go full bore and have a completely synthesized sound? Because if I wanted a, the sound of a clarinet, I would get my clarinet out. I have a couple clarinets in the closet. I could get one out and get the sound of a real clarinet. Uh, but what I want is the options that are here. But I don't mind the samples. I think they're quite good. And even if I use the clarinet sample, I can do things that you can't do on the clarinet, like all that glidey business and all the extra things. So even with the samples, I think the, the feature set of the instrument makes it makes it quite good. And the samples are good. Overall, I'd probably rate the samples as superior to the to the synthesized sounds that you had on like the EWE 4000. I think there's a 4500. Um, so compared to the previous versions, I actually do like the samples in general. I kind of wish there was more weird ones though, like, like a true square wave that was synthesized. Instead, we get a sample of uh, synthesized sounds, which is a little weird, but you know, I like to use them. Um, let's see if that can if I can hop up to like a something that's really really synthesized like a square a square stack. Let's 
Let's go up to 70, what is this, 76. Let's try that one now. I think I've used this one. Kind of a square. Let's see if we've got like a, I think there's just some classic triangle waves down here that would kind of give you Let's see what the square sounds like. The square is going to be a little harsher than a triangle. Maybe a little raunchier. And I think there's some sine waves and stuff in here too that you can get. There's even some really weird ones like uh, like uh, vowels that uh, sound like... Uh, let's see if we can hop on up to it. They sound like voices. Very strange. Let's pop one up here. 96, sorry, it's taking a little while. You can kind of hold it down, you can zoom on up. Now, the other thing that's cool about this particular instrument, besides the built-in sounds. Now, by the way, you're hearing that out of my Mesa Boogie in the background there. So uh, that's what it sounds like out of a guitar amp. That's also another cool option um, with this instrument is that you can actually... Um, you can actually use it with a guitar amp and get all the sounds that you would get with a guitar amp, including effects pedals and all that other kind of stuff. Um, let's hear it on a different channel. Let's see if I can hear it on a different channel real quick. Maybe something that's a little more extreme. Have an interesting sound. Try it on the dirty. Get some cool 70s sounds. When you when you kind of do it like that, let's leave it on the clean channel for now. Um, very very interesting possibilities with this. The other thing that I've used this for um, that I'll mention briefly is I've used it as a I've used it as a MIDI controller, and you can use this as a MIDI controller in uh, several different capacities. So it does have a regular MIDI out, which means you can use it with the standard MIDI bay or another synthesizer like uh, you know, any, any synthesizer that supported uh, MIDI over the years, um, you, can, you can use that for it. The other thing though is that uh, I've used it as a controller in Ableton to control a bunch of other different sounds, including um, other sampled sounds that I think are better than these onboard sounds. Just to give you a little bit of an example, we can get some string bass here. Can't even get that good vibrato going. So that's pretty cool. Let's hear it actually. Uh, hear it with the, the background music here. So you can get a lot of interesting effects there with that. Notice I get a little out of breath playing it. It really does feel like oboe, um, which is uh, takes some getting used to. Some other features that are on this though, as you're using it as a MIDI controller, you can also plug it in um, to an amplifier and use the onboard sounds as well. So you can get, say, a combination of sounds if you if you wanted that. Let's hear what that sounds like. Um, to kind of hear both. <laughs> Kind of useful to get maybe like an array of sounds if you want that at some point. What's also cool about this um, particular model is I'll take this little cap off here. There's a whole bunch of little pots that can control a whole host of onboard effects, um, including including um, you know a low frequency oscillator to produce say 
um, vibrato if you wanted it to, but I choose to do vibrato with this. Usually if you're gonna fake vibrato with a synthesizer, you use an LFO, a low frequency oscillator. Um, there's a chorus that you can turn up, there's um, breath control that you can alter to, to, to dial in exactly how you want it to feel. Um, there's reverb that you can turn up or turn down. Um, so if I turn up the reverb, let's see what that sounds like. Pretty nice. Uh, the reverb that's built into it is a digital reverb that's that's pretty decent overall. So you have lots of little options with that as well. There's almost too many to talk about. You can transpose if you want to play, like let's say you're reading a clarinet part, uh, which is in B flat, you can transpose uh, everything into the clarinet key. Uh, so you transpose it a half step, or I'm sorry, a whole step. If you're doing saxophone, you transpose it a sixth or a third uh, for E flat or a whole step for B flat, say tenor and soprano saxophone. Um, I let you do even, you know, you could read horn parts with this, with the French horn thing. Really lets you play a whole bunch of orchestra parts. And I actually used this when I was a band director. I'd bring it in and I'd have it hooked up um, via wireless. This is the last feature that I, not just the last feature, but this is a feature I really want to mention is that it comes with a built-in wireless. So this little wireless thing, you can plug it in, plugs in and charges with a USB charger that you probably already have. Um, and has stereo output and this outputs in stereo by the way and so you can put it on your mixer and plug it right in or plug it in your amp as mono or stereo um, this is a stereo out on the bottom that automatically converts to mono or stereo you have a headphone out uh, which is eighth inch so that you can use it with headphones or this works just fine to hook up to a mixer as well to use that little headphone uh, headphone output there so it's it's pretty cool so i hooked this up with a wireless and then if i was doing anything with the kids if i wanted to play somebody's part i wouldn't have to try to think in my head okay now let me let me refinger everything because this is a horn and f let me imagine i'm playing the lower register of a clarinet that's how i used to do it you know like no uh just press the transpose button and just you know transpose it up to say it's in c you could do d flat d just transpose it you know, down to F, and then boom, now I can read a horn part. Uh, and then when I'm done, I can just go back to, um, go back to C, which is really, really useful. So great, great set of features there for that. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's other ones. You can turn the FX on or off. You can, you can do lots of different things um, that I even have time to talk about. Uh, you could change the level of the effects. Um, you can turn the wireless on or off at the unit uh, if you want to. You can run hardwired or wireless. The plug for the wireless also charges this. This has an internal battery that you have to put in when you get it. That's right here, and you can actually replace that battery. You can also replace the pressure sensor at the top if you wear it out, which is great, because eventually these sorts of things may wear out. Um, boy, it's just a great instrument all around, and I wanted to share it with you guys and show you everything that you might want to see with something like this. And of course, you can hear it on my CD if you're interested in hearing such a very, very strange instrument. And I guess that's about it. So um, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good one.